There is a class of knots that construct great heads, and they are known as walnuts. Funny enough, you'll need your head, and you'll also need your walnut. Now, it's technically so that a walnut is tied with three strands or more, which makes a knobbier knot than its counterpart, whose strands will lead to the floor. The simplest knot is a wall and crown, and a fun knot indeed. But as a tongue leads up and a neck leads down, it's not exactly what we need. Nevertheless, and just for fun, we'll tie a wall and crown. And when our nut is done, doubled and all, we'll tie a crown and wall. If you haven't seen how to wall, crown, or double, you might want to see that now. Start with a wall. And make a crown on top. This is a single wall and crown, the first walnut of its kind. We can enlarge the knot by doubling the strands, which also makes it stronger. Let's loosen the knot a little and double the red strand. We can double the strand by following the adjacent lead. This strand can follow the lead along the top or on the bottom. Knots can change character depending on which path you choose, so I suggest playing around and seeing what you like. Here we're following along the top. Repeat with the second strand. And again with the third. These untucked ends can be trimmed to the knob, but tucking them down can increase the security of the knot. How the knot is finished varies by application and name. Wall, whale, and walnut knots were described in the 1600s, and their names were applied to any of the wall and crown derivatives, or the wall alone. These knots were commonly used for rigging aboard ship. Their use in form was widespread and as ambiguous as their names. This form was called a tack. The knot was used to stop a sail and needed some protection from wear. So the strands were tucked and tapered, then wormed, parceled, and served. This process also thickens the stem and will strengthen an eye when shackled. Last, we have the man rope knot, a name we still see today. Before it was tied, each strand was covered with canvas then tied and tucked and cut flush at the base. The knot itself was sometimes painted, and adding a washer and sleeve reduced abrasion. This knot was used at the ends of a man rope, which were located beside ladders and stairs found on old ships. The two-strand version is the exact same. We start with a wall, and we tie the crown on top.
Doubling with two strands works the same as with three or more. We just follow the adjacent lead. The three strand version is unique in that a lead follows itself, while the two and four strand versions have leads that follow others. Check it out. The red follows the adjacent yellow. And the yellow follows the adjacent red. Each part is followed until the entire path is doubled where a choice can be made to finish the knot or to expand it further. We can expand it further by continuing along the adjacent lead, which triples it into a three-ply knot. We'll triple a knot later, but for now, let's finish this knot by tucking the strands down along the stem. Here we've loosened the knot in part of the middle so we can see how the strands get tucked towards the stem or continue on to enlarge the knot. First we tied the wall and crown. Now we'll tie the crown and wall. Here we start with a crown. And we'll tie a wall underneath. At this point, we can complete the knot or enlarge it. To complete the knot, tuck all three strands up through the middle. With the strands tucked up, we officially have a foot rope knot, which can be made bigger by doubling the strands. Doubling works the same as the wall and crown. Just follow the adjacent lead. Notice the strands lead into the crown first, whereas in the previous knot, the strands lead into the wall first. Here I'm doubling the red strand and following along the top. Same with this yellow strand. And same with the last. To complete the knot, tuck each strand up to the middle. With the strands all tucked, we call this the double foot rope knot, which provided a foothold when working a sail. These ideas work with any number of strands. This same knot, tied with two strands and tripled, makes a pretty good snakehead. We start with the crown. And then tie the wall underneath. Once again, we can double by following the adjacent lead. The red follows the yellow.
and the yellow follows the red. Now that the knot's been doubled, we can continue following to triple it. And if there's any confusion, try following each lead a little bit at a time. Here we've tripled one side of the crown, now we'll triple the other side. Below, we can triple the wall. And last, we tuck the strands up to the middle to complete the knot. 